good to see y'all out tonight. So you're going to have to really raise your voices and sing. 425. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. 425. You may remain seated unless I catch you not singing. Good evening. Good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. I want to welcome each of you to our services tonight. <coughs> uh, remind you, this coming, this coming Sunday, at the end of our second service, our 11 o'clock service, we'll have a regular scheduled business meeting, so don't forget about that. Do we have any other announcements we need to share tonight? Okay. Do we have any praise reports? Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, if you'll turn with me to the book of Matthew, the second chapter of the book of Matthew, very familiar passage of Scripture. We look at several different things in this Scripture, but we want to focus on just a couple of things tonight. We'll begin reading Matthew chapter 2. We'll begin reading verse number 1. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1. The Bible tells us, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. When Herod, excuse me, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream 
that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own land another way. Lord, we ask you to bless the reading of your word, and I just pray, Father, that uh, that you would just speak through the word that has been read and the words that will be said. And once again, Lord, we ask you to remove distractions from our heart and our mind. Allow us to focus on what you want to say to us. And Father, give us ears to hear what you would have us to hear. I once again offer this body and this voice to you to be used for you and by you. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. I know that uh, Christmas time for a lot of people is it's not always... Um, it's really not always what it's cracked up to be. We, we, we make this big thing and we look for the best Christmas possible, but uh, sometimes Christmas just don't turn out the way we think it's going to turn out. And so my hope, my prayer this year, this Christmas season, that we will have a, a better Christmas than, than any other, uh, other year. And I know with, with uh, COVID and all the, th all the things that are going on, I know that that may sound odd, but I still believe we can. And if we will decide to pursue uh, the right kind of Christmas, the right way, it could be the best Christmas that we've ever had. And so I want to just focus on two things out of this scripture tonight. There's so many things that, that, that just jump out at me uh, when I read this passage of scripture. But I want to focus on two things tonight from this scripture that if we would do, I believe that we will have... Uh, the right kind of Christmas, the kind of Christmas that, uh, that, that we will really feel good about. And, and it, it will uh, be everything that it should be and can be for us. We have to ask ourselves sometimes, what do we want out of Christmas? And a lot of, I've heard people, especially when I was living in, living in East Tennessee, they would, every year there would be somebody who said, well, I hope we have a white Christmas this year. Now the odds of us having that here uh, in Mississippi are, are slim. And... Uh, I'd rather it not snow on Christmas, but, but if it does, that's fine. Um, for some people, it's the perfect gift. They, they think, man, if I could just have that, you know, the perfect gift, that the, the, the thing that I've been wanting all year, the thing that I desire. And I think for children more so than adults, but even adults uh, feel that way sometimes. But I think this year probably what most people would desire the most is just to be able to get together with all their family. And not, and, and not being able to do that in a lot of cases and having to take uh, precautions, uh, that, that would be one of the things that, that people would like to do. But we've all been disappointed for one reason or the other uh, around Christmas time. The truth is that Christmas has never been the problem. The problem has always been our expectations. Uh, we, we expect things that just sometimes... Uh, maybe it's that gift we expected when we was a child. Well, we just really wanted that gift and didn't get it or, or, or hoping that all the family got together and everybody got along and all that kind of things. But the truth of the matter is the wise men, they show us uh, the right thing. What we do, sometimes we look, we're looking t towards the wrong things to make our Christmas, but the wise men show us two things, uh, the, the right things that we need to truly uh, be looking for during the Christmas season. And we find in verse number two, when they arrived uh, to Jerusalem, they wanted to know where the king of the Jews was. And I think, my friends, we need to know where Jesus is. I and mean, first of all, we need to know that he's in our heart. And if he's not in our heart, that, we're not really going to have a, a, the best Christmas we could possibly have unless we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But they wanted to know where he was at. And the reason they wanted to know where he was at so they could worship him. And so the, the wise men show us that Christmas is an opportunity to worship worship the Lord, to worship God, to worship Jesus. And I believe if we, with all the craziness that's going on in our society today, and, and different people are going to do different things. Some families are going to get together anyway. Some families are not. Maybe just their immediate family. Whatever you choose to do is your business. That don't. That's up to you. But the truth of the matter is, my friends, Family will let us down. The gifts we get will let us down. But Jesus will never let us down. And what Christmas is all about, has always been about, is about the birth of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. It's about worshiping Him. So if we would look for ways to worship the Lord and bring true worship into this Christmas season, even though we may not uh, make those long trips or have people travel to come to our homes and all that type of thing, if we would focus more uh, instead of focusing on family and friends and, and, 
and, and gifts, it, it, those type of things that may disappoint us anyway. I remember we had an old uncle. He would disappoint us every Christmas. You just knew he was going to do something to just run to Christmas for somebody, and, and he seemed to always do that. So why don't we just seek the Lord? Jeremiah chapter 29 says, in verse 13 and 14 says this. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. So the Lord said, if you'll seek me, you'll find me. The wise men were seeking after Jesus. That's what their purpose was. They went to the holy city. They followed that star and it, they went to the holy city. It turns out that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But it made sense to them, I'm sure, to go to the holy city and that's where they went and they started asking. They were seeking the Lord to worship Him. They were seeking after Him. And I want to encourage each and every one of us this Christmas season with all the distractions with, with that we have with COVID and any other distractions you may have, Let's just seek out the Lord. Let's seek Him out for the purpose of truly worshiping Him. I know at our home, we you know, started when my children were very small. We read the Bible story each year. Now, uh, Riley reads it for us each year. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's, a, but it's something we've always done. And I used to do it, and Vicki would do it, and then April would do it, and Brenton would do it, and now the grandchildren begin to read but we, we can do more than that. We can add to that. We need to make it a true time of worship, not just read the, the story, then go to the presence, but, but truly have a time of worshiping the Lord, taking time to pray and, and just thank God for all that He's done. Uh, it's so important that, that we do that. Um, so many people are looking for so many different things out of Christmas. I, I read a story about, about this one lady. She, she really wanted this certain ring and she just thought that ring would make her look beautiful and young and everything else. And she had left magazines open or, or not magazines, catalogs open all over the house. So finally, she just put a hen up on the refrigerator and said, I want something to make me look young and beautiful. And she had all those uh, books opened up with, you know, little check marks by it and all that. Well, anyway, but she, she just put a note on the bar and said, I would really like something for Christmas to make me look young and beautiful. So her husband got her thigh master. And uh, she was disappointed. Things will disappoint you around Christmas. I mean, you can get disappointed at Christmas time. We've all been disappointed at some point in time at Christmas time. But I promise you this, if you'll make Jesus the center of the Christmas uh, celebration, guys, don't buy your wives. A, I'm telling you, Chris, don't do it, boy. <laughs> don't go that route uh, you'll be in sure enough trouble that was me I was talking about anyway so anyway uh, <clears throat> it didn't work out very good and they don't sell them at Dollar Tree by the way but anyway but you'll be let down by something at Christmas by a family member a friend uh, by a, a co-worker uh, something you're going to be let down but it just happens but you'll never be let down if you're worshiping the Lord, if you focus on worshiping the Lord, if we'll, if we'll seek the right thing, seek Jesus Christ and seek Him for the purpose of truly worshiping Him, uh, you will not be disappointed. But secondly, to give the right thing. And here we find these wise men, they came a long way and they brought gifts. Uh, we know of the three gifts. They brought gifts of gold, uh, which was a gift for a king. They brought uh, the gift of, of uh, frankincense, was, which was a gift for a priest. They got, brought the gift of myrrh, which was the gift for the dead. And, of course, Jesus came to this earth uh, to die on a cross for us. So the wise men came with the right gifts. But I thought about this as well. So does the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father gave and provided the right gift. The Bible tells us, the most famous uh, scripture in the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, that, that was a perfect gift. Uh, folks, if information is what we would have needed, God would have sent an educator. If technology is what we needed, God would have sent us a scientist. If pleasure is what we needed, God would have sent an entertainer. But my friends, our biggest problem was sin and our biggest need was forgiveness. So God sent a Savior through His Son, Jesus Christ, and it was the appropriate gift for each and every one of us. And so when I think about what God gave to us by giving His Son, 
giving what we needed, a Savior, one to go to a cross and die for our sins, to pay the price of our sins, we, we, we should be able to give good gifts too. And what I mean by that, sometimes it's just the gift of kindness. Sometimes it's just the gift of love. Sometimes it's just the gift of helping someone who may need a helping hand or, or encouraging the hurting or those that are discouraged, uh, uh, reaching out and helping someone in need. Those type of things are things that we should do and recognize that that is pleasing to God. But one gift that I think we need to be always be willing to give is the gift of forgiveness. See, God forgave us of, of our sins. When I think about it, God forgave me of everything I ever done. Yesterday, I spent a good portion of the day with, with, with uh, a guy I went to school with, my best friend, uh, and we're, we 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 were into a lot of different things, and we we reminisced about some of the things uh, we did in life, and and how the Lord. And he looked at me and said, man, God protected us from a lot of things. I said, yes, he did. And I think about some of the things that I've done in life, no, no, nothing horrible, not murder or anything like that, but we, we wasn't always doing what we should do. But I have a God that forgave me. Isn't that a good thing? God forgives, and he forgives us for the things we've done. Now, if God's willing to give us forgiveness, shouldn't we be able to willing to give forgiveness to others? That's maybe the greatest gift we could give this season is give forgiveness to to someone. Whether they want to receive it or not, we can give it. Amen? I mean, every gift that you receive that someone gives you, you don't necessarily I mean, somebody bring you a fruit cake, you may pass it on to the next person. I don't know. I, I give Donald all my fruit cakes. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but, uh, uh, you know, you may you may pass it on. I don't know, but it's up to you whether, well, up to the person whether or not they receive it, but it's up to us to give it. And so the greatest gift I think we can give may be forgiveness, but surely love and kindness and help to the hurting and all those type of things. Uh, these type of gifts will bring the greatest joy to our heart and our soul, I believe. I believe that those are the type of gifts that we will feel the best about. And we ought to give without expecting anything in return. Heard a story about a young kid in the fifth grade, a little boy, he was outcast of the whole class. Nobody really had anything to do with him. He was poor, but he wanted to take, uh, they were having a little Christmas party the Friday before they got out of school for Christmas, and he knew that people would be bringing gifts and things like that, and he, he, he didn't have much to give, so he made a card. His mom helped him, and they made cards for every student in the class. And they had their little party, and they got time to exchange gifts, and he went to every one of them. And he gave them that card, called them by name, gave them the card. Here, Miss Gale, here's Donald, here, Lisa, here, Mike, here, Dana, here, Angie, right on down the line. Did everybody in the class, he gave a card. And, uh, and, and nobody gave me anything in return. And the teacher heard him as he was leaving the school, said, not a one, not a one. I didn't miss a one. I didn't miss a single one. He didn't receive a single gift, but his heart was on giving, not receiving. And I believe when we put our heart on giving and not receiving and not worrying about what we receive, but just give from the heart, give, give of ourselves, give kindness, give love, give a helping hand to someone who, who may need it, give forgiveness, all those type things, we'll be able to be as happy as that little boy was and say, I didn't miss a single one. Wouldn't it be sad to leave this world knowing that we could have gave something to somebody, and we did. We could have helped somebody. Our kindness might have changed their life. Encouragement might have lifted them up and changed the direction of our life. People have been good to us, haven't they? You think about your life, I think about my life, I think about all the people who've been encouragers to me. When I first surrendered to, to, to preach, uh, I mean, I, was, I had so very little confidence in myself, and still do, but I have confidence in Jesus now, and I have more confidence in Jesus now than I ever have. And the thing is, uh, there were so many people that was encouragers to me. Miss Bernice Thompson, when I surrendered to preach, she said, I knew you was going to surrender to preach. And so many others came up to me and said, I've been praying about it, and they knew that this was going to happen. And it just encourages me, and any time I'd get up and preach, preach a message, there was always those encouragers. I'm sure they were those that went home and said, what a mess he made of that, you know? But praise the Lord for those that encouraged us along the way. And we've all had that. I had it in school. Uh, I had one girl, Linda, uh, Linda, me and Kim was talking about her yesterday. Linda, uh, her maiden name was Woods. It wasn't for her. 
I would probably wouldn't have graduated school, but she, she stayed on me and Ken and made us study. We'd go to her house and study. I'm so grateful for that because I, I probably wouldn't have uh, graduated school if it wouldn't have been for her. She was such an encourager to me to try to try to learn, and I had such struggle with reading and all those different things that I struggled with that they didn't have letters for back then. They got letters for all that now, but... but uh, 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 I, I, I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful and that that they, she was there to encourage me. I'm grateful for parents. and I, So many things I'm grateful for, all those that encouraged me and helped me when I didn't really deserve it. I didn't do anything great to deserve it, but they were just there to do it anyway. And I'll tell you, that's what, that's a, that's what Christians give. Christians give encouragement to those that need it. Christians give love and they give kindness. So the happiest people, I believe, if you want to have an unusual Christmas, the best Christmas you ever had, take time to seek the right thing. Seek Jesus Christ and make time for worship in this Christmas season. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with church and all these type of things, with the way things are going, but I know this, every opportunity we get to worship, we need to worship. Amen? And we need, to, we need to enjoy the time of worship and focus on Jesus, seek Him out. The Bible tells us that we'll seek Him, we can find Him. And my friends, it's time we seek Him out. Those wise men went a long way to seek Him. I believe we need to do the same thing. We need to go what, do whatever it takes to where we feel closer to Him. Not only did they uh, give the right gifts, but they went to the right place. They went and they found him. And we need to find him as well. And I hope and pray that you will and make him a center of your Christmas by, by seeking the right thing, by giving the right gift, and being more interested in what you can give instead of what you might receive. Father, we ask you to bless us and, and, and let us learn from this. So many things we can take from this passage of Scripture, Lord. Uh, we, we recognize that these Wise men left a different direction. I pray that we'll leave a different direction spiritually every time we meet in your house. But Father, we just ask you to have your way in our midst tonight. And, and Father, help us to make a commitment to you and to ourselves that we're going we're gonna to seek your Son and make this Christmas season about Jesus. I know there's going to be things that we miss out on. It may be the office to get together. It may be the family to get together. Whatever it may be, we may miss out on some of those things, but we don't have to miss out on the real purpose, and that's your son Jesus being born, coming to this earth to live for each and every one of us and to die on the cross. Have your way in our midst, we ask in Christ's name. Amen. What number, Brother Don? 458, near to the heart of God, 458. God speaking to your heart, won't you be the first to come? I ask you to stand, please. Thank you. 